<laughs> this will be a quick video just to introduce some circuit components and their symbols. So this here, this is a cell, okay, it is just a, you'd probably call it a battery, it's a 1.5 volt cell. And it actually, these school ones come with the two points for the wires and they also have the symbol on it. You need to remember when you draw this, the larger one is the positive side of the cell. And that current is always going from positive to negative, even though we know electrons are going in the opposite direction. So that's a cell. So here is a bulb, and this is another one you'll probably be familiar with from primary school. It's a bulb um, in a bulb holder. So that's the bulb, that's the bulb holder. Don't worry about it, it's just a bulb. When we connect anything up to a cell, we tend to use red wires on the positive side, black wires on the negative side. That is just to help us imagine and uh, work with the circuit. There is no actual difference between the two wires apart from the color. Now there is two ways to draw a bulb. I prefer, I prefer the little bump, put a ring around it, but a lot of people use the symbol that's actually on there, and it's just as correct, which is a cross in a circle. Okay, this is just a 12 volt bulb, okay, it's a little bit bigger, works with a 12 volt power supply. This is a switch, it's a push switch, in fact, okay and works just by pushing on and off. And it has the symbol that looks just like this. A little break in the circuit that you can see can be easily pushed closed. You do sometimes see the connectors like this, okay, but they're not actually necessary. I think they make it all look a bit more complicated. So the circuit I've got there all goes together, and I hope you kind of know this already really, with um, straight lines to represent the wires. And I can see I've used the red side, so actually this switch is over here on the positive side of the circuit. And that's my very simple circuit that almost everybody will have connected together in primary school and you'll be okay with that. This is another type of switch, it's a three-way switch, okay, so it just actually allows you to either choose to connect one side of the circuit or the other side of the circuit, as simple as that. Um, again, you can see the symbol on there has the little connections. It's up to you whether you draw them or not. We won't really often use them in GCSE. We'll come across them in A-level though, when we're charging and discharging sides of a circuit. Cells can go together though in batteries, and this is a battery. Okay, it's a six volt battery. So actually we can draw this as three, or sorry, four cells together. And we'd often see just the notation above it, exactly what voltage that is. So power packs, that's one of these. You've probably seen it, variable power supply. It's got an AC and a DC side. They're drawn just like this positive side, negative side, okay, and often we would put on what the range is, if that was applicable, or if you actually wanted to have a power pack that was definitely set at a certain voltage, then you'd write it on like that, and if you wanted to be using the AC side, be a little squiggle, if you wanted to be using the DC side, you could put the little DC symbol as well. They just so people know which side of the power pack to plug it in. You see those symbols on there as well. AC and DC. These are fixed resistors. In other words, their resistance doesn't change. Okay, they come in all different shapes and sizes. The little colours on them help you to match them up so you know which one's which. This one's been labelled here. This is a 200 and 20 kilo ohm resistor. Uh, we draw them just like this. Okay, with the ruler. <laughs> uh, and again, if it's a 10 ohm resistor, we can just write it on. If it's that resistor we just, just saw, just write the value above it. This is a variable resistor. Okay, it can just 
slide along like that to, um, to change the amount of this wire, the length of this wire that it's going through. Okay, as long as you're plugging in this one and this one, then it'll be a variable resistor. And it has a symbol just like an ordinary resistor. But with an arrow through it just to show that it, it is variable. That one goes from around 0 to around 16 ohms. So you may wish to include a value, a dimension, if you like, on the diagram like so. And you can see um, the resistance on there. These are 1 kilo ohm resistor 1K. These are 470 kilo ohm resistors there. This is an LDR. It's a light dependent resistor. So that little thing on there can be used as a light sensor. The resistance of this depends upon the light. That's the symbol. The two little arrows coming in represent the light. These little ones in here, they are thermistors. Thermistors, their resistance depends on uh, temperature. So they're really useful for sensing temperature. These are pretty small for thermistors, but they do the same job. We often put them in like baths of water that we're heating or whatever to see how their resistance changes with temperature. And it has a symbol like that. These are capacitors. Capacitors have the capacity to store charge. So in here, is basically two plates and those two plates get charged up positive and negative and that if you like is how the charge is stored there's a not a conductor between them, there's an insulator between them and that means one plate can become positive and the other one negative without the charge just going between them okay drawn like that again you can write on what the value they have these are a hundred micro farad capacitors so we just do something like that in a circuit diagram this is your standard school voltmeter okay it does say quite specifically it's got a range of 0 to 20 volts there so the highest it could do is 9.99 volts okay positive terminal negative terminal that has the symbol like that. So that's an ammeter and you can clearly tell them apart because of the big A on these standard school ammeters. That's a 0 to 10 amp one. So again, it can go up as high as 9.99 amps or as low as minus 9.99. It's got a symbol like that. Okay. Um, and the other one, the other meter to talk about is an ohm meter. Now these are actually multimeters and they can be a varied loads of different things so you can have DC voltmeter you can have ohm meter settings you can have it just operating as a diode an ammeter uh, other um, sensitivities of ammeter or a AC voltmeter here as well and others will have other settings as well the thing about these is you can vary the scale so if you want to measure in the millivolts Okay, this is now showing straight millivolts on the screen. And if you want to measure in the milliamps or even the microamps, because often you are very, very small currents we're talking about, then these settings will allow you to change that scale to how sensitive the, the meter is. But over here, it's called an ohm meter, which means it measures the resistance between the two ports. At the minute, it's saying it's a really high resistance, a too high resistance to measure because there's nothing in between them. But if I connect a wire between them, wires have very low resistances. There you go, almost down to zero. Is it completely zero? Ah, that wire's got 0.4 ohm resistance there. So you probably guessed what an ohm meter symbol is. It's an ohm sign in a circle in the circuit and it goes across um, and it goes across whatever you're trying to measure the resistance of. So these are diodes. Okay, diodes only let current go through in one direction. Uh, 
there we go. It will only, positive will only go towards the um, silver side there, see how much way around it is. Symbol looks like this. Okay, so it just shows that the current will go in this direction. I think it looks like a play pause symbol and um, therefore the current will go in the play pause direction. This is a different type of diode, just in there. This is a light emitting diode. So we call that an LED. Just has two little arrows coming off, which represent the light. So that is a LED, light emitting diode. Okay. So this is the symbol for a transformer. Okay, just is a squiggly line between two points. Okay, transformers, there's no, um, there's no current flowing between the two sides. There's a magnetic field. Okay, and it can often be used to step up or to step down the voltage. It means change the voltage from either main supply down to charger supply. Um, so your iPhone charger is a 5 volt output and the mains is 240 volt or it could be in the national grid to step up from the power output of the power station to the really very high voltage 400 um, kilovolts in the national grid so that's that symbol there this is a transformer here which is just for demoing it's a laminated soft iron core there okay and one side will be input side this one has got 500 turns around the coil on this side 500 turns of wire that creates an alternating magnetic field and on this side it's got 2,000 turns of wire so this will be acting as a step up transformer meaning from the input to the output we're getting a much higher voltage we're actually getting four times the voltage because the ratio is four um, one to four so the voltage is stepped up one to four last one I'm supposed to tell you about a pretty standard motor and a buzzer so a motor is an M sign with a squiggly line underneath it often in a little circle like that and a buzzer is looks like this or sometimes just as a rectangle rather than a sort of cup thing but it's still the same Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.